Viewer from Bagley wants to know what's happening with the minimum wage. Who wants to take a run at the minimum wage? Senator Cohen, maybe start with you. Uh, probably appropriate since uh, everybody's looking at the, at the Senate. Um, the conference committee, I believe, and I'm not on the conference committee, but I believe has agreed to a figure of $9.50. Um, I think the, the issue, the major issue that, that is out there is the question of indexing the minimum wage to provide uh, uh, a periodic increase uh, uh, without going back to the legislature all the time. Uh, that's in uh, the House position. Uh, represented by the House conferees, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there are a lot of us in the Senate who would support that, at least in the majority caucus. Um, I'm not sure the support is quite there uh, to bring out a conference. I'm, I'm hoping we'll pass a strong minimum wage bill. I think it's needed. I think it's important for uh, the question of income inequality. I think it's important for uh, folks who find themselves at the, at the lower end of the economic scale to have uh, some ability to, to try to make a uh, uh, more of a living wage than they're able to do so uh, presently. Uh, but uh, I, I'm optimistic we'll get a bill in the next couple of weeks. And, uh, and, and for those folks who, who need that, uh, that stronger minimum wage, they'll have it. Senator Weber? Well, I think that uh, we have to remember that uh, and I've had a number of people say, well, you, we have raised the minimum wage before and we haven't lost jobs, et cetera, but we've never raised the minimum wage by this amount before uh, either. And, and uh, we certainly we want everyone to, to, to do well, to earn as much as they can possibly earn. Uh, and yet uh, I am confident that if the minimum wage bill is passed under the terms that, that uh, Senator Cohen talks about, that uh, it is going to cost uh, people in my district a job. Um, I had uh, information from, uh, from a, a grocer who actually has uh, 20 uh, youth uh, that are hired, and he gave the average hours, and he worked it out with all the costs that are associated due to this raise, and his increased costs for the year based on, on their hours is, is just under $51,000. And, uh, you know, those... Uh, there will be a cut of hours, or there will be a cut of people, and there will be individuals that that um, are going to suffer as a result of this increase if it uh, goes through. Uh, another problem that we have is with our nursing homes. Um, you know, we have not done an adequate job the, by, as a state uh, in the money that we've allowed our nursing homes to have. And uh, I have over 20 nursing homes in my district. and. Um, and they have been asking for raises for years. The state has not allowed sufficient raises in years uh, and over the, over the years. And, um, you know, there, there is going to be a serious problem with this sudden increase in the minimum wage and uh, in relationship to where their existing workers are right now. And, and if, quite frankly, if the legislature isn't more cooperative than they have been, we will continue to see nursing homes uh, be closed, and they will close even at a faster rate than what they have been. Representative Lawrence? Well, I, I guess I'm disappointed that uh, that the proposal is taking such a dramatic jump. Uh, I was very easy or very, I guess, convinced that if we could go to the federal minimum uh, at 725 as the first move, uh, with perhaps some other increases, but not the big one we're talking about. Uh, people in my district were comfortable with that too. Businesses, we can live with that, and and uh, and and a gradual increase would be a something they could also live with. But at 950, uh, I've had some major employers call me, and we're only 20 miles from North Dakota. Uh, you give them a building, and they're in North Dakota. Uh, they don't have to be in Minnesota. They don't have to be in Fergus Falls, uh, and and yet it, it's it's not that they're paying minimum wage in a lot of cases either. But it, it does affect their business, and um, uh, I'm, I'm really troubled by the amount of money that uh, uh, they, the legislature seems they could just take from businesses and nothing negative will happen from it, like they will just increase their prices or they'll sell more of something. And, and in this economy, that's not going to happen. Uh, in Fergus Falls, we've already lost the Kmart store. It's closed. Uh, you know, business is okay. But it's, it's pretty fragile. And I think that's pretty true all across the state of Minnesota. Um, and uh, most of the businesses that are, 
well, the one I mentioned, I mean, a lot of them are paying more than, substantially more than minimum wage now. And uh, uh, yet I have, like you, grocery stores, hire a lot of students. They have carry-out service. I can see carry-out service being a thing in the past. They don't have to do it. So those jobs will be gone. Uh, I don't see any positives with an increase up to 950. Now, is there any tip credit in there? That's the other question that people ask uh, for, the, for the restaurant workers. Uh, I assume there's not. Uh, that would be another thing that would be a, at least a little bit more tolerable for those that are in the restaurant business. I, uh, I guess here's the, uh, the issue that kind of divides the uh, two sides of the table mm -hmm. here. Um, I uh, fully agree with uh, Senator Cohen. I think that there's an increase uh, needed in the minimum wage. Uh, I know that uh, the comment was made that it was too big a jump. It's being phased in under the uh, bill. It isn't, uh, doesn't go immediately to uh, 950, so it's phased in over time. If we look at the last time the minimum wage was increased, um, inflation has eaten away at it. And uh, uh, what we're really trying to do is get back to the purchasing power that the uh, minimum wage was at the last time it was passed. And in fact, uh, some would say that uh, at 950, it's still not quite where we were a few years ago when we passed the minimum wage, that if you adjusted it for inflation, it probably should be closer to $10 an hour. But I don't think you should uh, have to work uh, or be working full time and uh, live in poverty. And there are other parts of the state budget that are hit as a result of, of this because then a lot of the people, because they're making a substantial, a substandard wage, uh, then qualify for some of the public assistance uh, programs and so on. So through our tax dollars, we're often uh, subsidizing sometimes some very uh, prosperous uh, businesses because they're paying a, a minimum wage and uh, their employees have to go out and be uh, subsidized uh, in a variety of ways through different programs. I, the, qu the question I would have of the legislators themselves is, of the House, of the Senate, what percentage do you think are those that have come from business, that have had any experience in running a business, owning a business? I think it's a pretty small number. So the people that are out th that are in our cluster here at the House and Senate making this decision I think some have a hard time relating to what it takes to run a business today. Well, I certainly have talked to a number of business owners in my district who feel that uh, increasing the minimum wage is uh, needed and something that they can support. Um, I would recognize there's a difference between the economy of, of greater Minnesota and the Twin Cities, and certainly a place like my district, which is, which is in pretty good economic shape. Um, and uh, Bill raised some of, the, some of the issues. I mean, I think the conferees are looking at the question of youth employment and some of the other uh, pieces of the minimum wage. But, but relative to what Lynn said, j just think of the numbers. Uh, I was just doing some of the arithmetic. Uh, if you raise the minimum wage to that $9.50, you'll have somebody making minimum wage who will make somewhere around fifteen to $16,000 a year. That's before taxes. Uh, at least in the Twin Cities, I, I can't speak for for some of the uh, the non uh, metro districts, but uh, uh, an apartment rent is around seven hundred to seven hundred fifty dollars a month. That's nine thousand dollars a year. That means that person uh, receiving the proposed minimum wage, and again, that's before taxes, uh, will have approximately six thousand dollars plus to live on, exclusive of rent. That would include utilities, that would include food, that would include transportation. Who's able to live on that? Even if you raise the minimum wage, you'll still have people living uh, at a, stub a substandard basis. Uh, as Lynn pointed out, uh, with the, the very wide gap in time relative to an increase in minimum wage, uh, if you compare it on an inflationary basis, uh, we're just keeping pace with where inflation has been. And even with inflation at a fairly minimal amount over these last number of years, um, there still is not much uh, purchasing power with a minimum wage job. And, uh, you know, Bill, you, you talked about uh, you know, speaking with people uh, in your district, and uh, we've all done that relative to this issue. Uh, I've run into people, not necessarily from my district, but people who work at minimum wage who don't pay rent. The reason is, is that they live in their car and they can't afford rent, uh, and they're working on minimum wage. 
Um, I, I think it's almost a moral issue that we have to raise the minimum wage. Well, minimum wage is intended, I think, to be a, it's an entry level wage. It's not a not supposed to be a living wage, I don't think, or, or something that you you would hope you'd aspire to something that's better than that after learning the job that you're hired to do. I think I think you're right, and I think unfortunately we have created a business climate in Minnesota that really has not allowed that to happen. Um, you know, sending jobs across the state line is nothing new to Minnesota. Um, we had two homegrown businesses in Laverne, uh, Laverne Truck Equipment, Laverne uh, Fire Apparatus. They grew from 60, 70 jobs combined to over 200. The trouble is that growth happened in Brandon, South Dakota. Um, you know, a variety of issues besides the taxes. Uh, in those years, there was workers' comp and unemployment insurance. And, and, uh, and quite frankly, with the last year's budget and the tax increases of over, you know, including about $2 billion worth, um, you know, we have, we have managed to send people across the lines again. Uh, in light of the fact that with the estate tax and gift tax issues, uh, we're not now losing jobs. I'm losing retired people out of my communities. And, you know, the really sad thing about that is, is that group of people who were successful in business, had successful careers, successful jobs, and managed to accumulate some wealth, um, as in retirement, they have become an, an integral part of that, have remained an integral part of that community. When there is a charitable organization, the church, or, or other activities that have a fund a drive, they're the first ones that are approached. When we need volunteers, they're the first ones that are approached. When we need people to, to mentor our youth, they're the first ones that are approached. And now they're moving across the state line. And so what we're doing is not only raising money in the state of Minnesota, we're destroying the fabric of our rural communities. I, if I can just, I know we've talked quite a bit about this this, issue, this but, I think is important, right? Um, but, but just to respond, because I, I do think there is a legitimate concern in terms of, of uh, border areas. When you find uh, a comparison to North and South Dakota in, in particular. But I think some of the issues that you raise, uh, uh, Bill, are going to be taken care of and arguably within a week or so of uh, the time this is being uh, broadcast and taped. Uh, the gift tax, the estate tax that you, you mentioned. I think those issues will be dealt with uh, fairly soon in a way that I think you would, you would be uh, approving. So I think some of the particular issues you raise, and I'm not dismissive of somebody who might look at, at, at a significant uh, Minnesota state tax, which, which creates some problems, um, I think that person, if that person has the financial wherewithal uh, to be concerned about the estate tax, that person uh, should not be concerned about the minimum wage. That person is doing pretty well. Uh, but they'll find themselves, I think, uh, in a comparative way, uh, satisfied. Um, but again, I, I think we have to look at, at the other side of, of the economic ledger. And Representative Norton has mentioned you know, the question of whether or not somebody could find an entry-level position. Um, and if you go back X number of years ago, um, I might agree. But the reality is, is that in today's economy, You've got folks working those minimum wage jobs who would be delighted to get to the next rung of the economic ladder. And they can't because of where things have been. And these aren't kids, college kids, working a summer job. We're talking about adults who have children uh, who simply can't exist on what the current minimum wage is. And will be hard, it'll be hard for us to exist on the new proposed minimum wage. And one thing else that I wanted to just mention, we're talking about minimum wage. We haven't even talked about the impact of the, of the health insurance, the whole overhaul of the health insurance program on business. Uh, business doesn't really know yet what the, the total picture is going to be like, but it's not going to be probably positive. It's going to cost more. And, and so there's all kinds of pressures, I think, on today's business. Uh, that are, are going in the wrong direction. And one of the other areas that's severely impacted in my, my region is, is the hospitality industry. Um, right now, their margins are so tight that, that quite frankly, um, you know, their wait staff are, are not existing on minimum wage. They're on existing on minimum wage plus tips. In some cases, more than minimum wage plus tips. Uh, and, and But right now, their margins are so tight that they said with, with the increase in this minimum wage, um, you know, there are some of them that just, they're going to give up the fight and shut the door because we don't have the margins to exist with those kind of costs out in greater Minnesota. Well, we, uh, we'll have an opportunity to talk about this, I suspect, in the weeks ahead. Uh, Senator Cohen, I just ask you, you think in the next week or two this is probably going to move through? Is that kind of your prediction? That would be my guess. Okay. I'm not sure next week, but I'll say the next two weeks. 
Cor Representative Carlson? No, I, I, I would say it's going to move through. Uh, House and Senate have reached um, an agreement on a major part of the bill, and that's at the 950 mm -hmm. per hour. Uh, both bodies had passed an increase, and they've resolved that issue. Um, as uh, Senator Cohen pointed out, the biggest remaining issue is it, uh, to have it adjusted for inflation. And I think once that's resolved, it'll come back from conference committee and be passed into law.